And with the press of the big button and the recognition that it is in fact once again Thursday, welcome to Adromeda. <laughs> hey everybody, how you doing? How am I doing, you ask? I can tell you this, I feel no pain. <laughs> yes, I spent a little time in the chair of the oral surgeon today, who... Uh, committed atrocities upon my uh, upper neck, let's call it that, and uh, yeesh. You know, it's not uncomfortable. They they do such great anesthesia now. Uh, I didn't go under, not, not sedation, but anesthesia. But you know, when the crunching and the cracking and the drilling and the vibration, no, oh, holy henna. Thank you, Scott. Sound is good. Pleased to hear that. This is sugar-free grape juice, grape juice substitute, whatever, keto grape juice. Um, I think it should be called grape-free. It's sweet water, <laughs> but it's icy cold, and that's what the, uh, the tone of the day is due. Well, uh, I was going through notes last night, and... Uh, doing some show prep and things like that and realized that uh, there's supposed to be some degree of formality to this. Hey, let's make that live chat. And, uh, so, and that way when I do the, uh, the time indices, I've got a place to go and, and, you know, this happens here and this happens here and it's always this and this and this and this just got to put timestamps in front of it. And what I didn't do last week is introductions. So, with again no further ado it is thursday april 20th 420 yeah we'll do some humor about that no we won't we'll just say that dave is truly celebrating 420 because of the uh, happy meds that i was granted today Ooh. i don't feel loopy i don't feel pain but i definitely don't feel like myself so bear with me at any rate uh, it is Thursday, 7 p.m. on April 20th, and this is Adromeda, another Dave Rush Ask Me Anything Digital Alchemy. We get together every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time and do Tech Talk. Whatever and wherever the topics range, I've got something to get us started. Uh, this show is going to have to get longer sooner or later because there's so much to talk about all the time, and I want you guys to be more participatory when and if and where you can. So uh, I've got some, some neat topic starters today and every day. My name is the aforementioned and eponymous Dave Rush. And this has nothing to do with anything but my desire to share tech information with you, get tech information from you. We get together for an hour every week or so. Spend the first half hour shooting the breeze about techie stuff. Spend the second half hour doing a project or two, which is the way it's going to go today. And that constitutes as much of an intro as I think we need to do. So let's see who's here. Just a few people. It's a slow start. That happens. I'm good with that. Tullowit, not surprisingly, arrives almost four and a half hours before showtime. I can always count on that. And Patricia Grace, about a half an hour before time. Hello, Patricia Grace. Nice to see you. What a lovely chrysanthemum for Tullowit. The wrenched. There are more people here with wrenches than there aren't. We do, Okay, I see more people turning up now. There we go. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. <laughs> Fried chicken, chrysanthemums. Sure, why not? And the ever. Scott, come to the show. Let me know when you just drop me a text, drop me a, a, an email. Say, hey, you know what? Would you like me on the show this week? The answer will always be yes. Come on the show. They want to They want to see you. They want to hear from you. You know, I get to hear from you now and again, and we talk and do whatever. But uh, all of our, our zillions of friends and associates here, they, well, you've, you've done some more. You've, you've had a chance to pop in over on Discord. On the Uber Secret Channel. <laughs> All right. Live. Sound is good. Sound is good, says Patricia. Sync is weird. Well, there's always something. Oh, well, you know what? I didn't close my 97 tab page. Let's see if we can free up a little CPU time and memory time. 
I was really wrapped up in a project. Started this project at 4.35 o'clock, something like that. And uh, I looked up and it was four minutes till showtime. I was oh man, I've, I've done some prep on the day, but not much. So checking my sink is something that I haven't done yet. What have I done there? Okay, there we go. Reading messages here. Sync is off and sync. Yeah. You know, I should have realized that as soon as I said the word sync that there would be an in sync joke in there. So, and never any question about who was going to be launching that bon mot. Bon mot? Bon mot. I'm slowly moving to Linux Mint as a daily OS. I have news on the moving to Linux as a daily driver today. I've got some, some fascinatingly hopeful stuff. Jason Helms is here. Jason, I was thinking about you today. Something I wanted to mention or ask or whatever. It'll come to me. Maybe I have it in notes. Abu Bakr al Haj, my friend, Salam alaikum. Hey there, Jason and Jason, the what's up and eponymous college level word. Thank you. Every now and again, you get to use eponymous. Um, I don't think I ever knew the word, what it meant until I watched Hot Fuzz, the uh, Simon Pegg Britcom, not Britcom, it's a movie. When he pulled somebody over uh, who was an actor in Hamlet and he had mentioned the, the fact that he was playing the eponymous title character uh, so this is like seven eight nine years ago whenever Hot Fuzz came out I guess it's farther back than that so I saw Hot Fuzz before I went to Saudi certainly when I was in Saudi anyways so I had to look it up and I don't think I've ever used it in a sentence other than to discuss it so I, I've used it uh, as a meta word in the past, but now it just came to me to use it. Or maybe I have one of those daily word apps and today's word was eponymous. Remember how to use? <laughs> no, I don't. I do love those things. And because of that love, I can't use one because you know, it'll sound like <laughs> that's a college level word. People will say phrases like that. Catherine Morgan is here. Holy Hannah. Nice to see you. Welcome home. Welcome to the homeland. It's a hibiscus. Yeah, like you could tell that much detail on an, on an emoticon in a YouTube chat forum. Fine. Hibiscus. <laughs> a mint pun. Well done. Is it dedicated or committed? Rumors are <laughs> that I've been committed someplace. I don't need to read the rest of that. Is, is uh, okay everybody checking in with each other cool bananas i am so committed that i can't say bye 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 jeez oh man we are not going to do in sync tunes and references and ditto for backstreet boys and one direction <laughs> we all do need your prayers and prayers for our own thank you so much all right, well, let's dive right into it then. I do have two projects today, so I'm not going to beat around the bush too much with all the usual pre-stuff. I don't need that. I do need this. So let's go into Uncle Notes. And we did an introduction, and we know what day it is, and it's 420. So uh, let's do News of the Week. Get that out of the way right now. Today, this very day, April 20th, 2023, Ubuntu. 23.04 was officially released, uh, which was really funny. I was watching the uh, the Ubuntu forums, and people get up in their own time zone at 1 a.m., wherever they are on the 20th, and immediately start posting, where's the release? I need to download it now. Got it. <laughs> the, the whining and the crying, they, they, it turns up at about noon uh, London time whenever they do one of these new releases. So there were people wailing and there was a great gnashing of teeth while we waited for it to come out and then it finally came out. Okay. I mentioned this, A, because it's interesting, but 
Uh, also because of something that I want you to know about Ubuntu. Everybody's distro uh, has a, a little bit different release cycle. And I want to just fill you in a little bit on the Ubuntu cycle because it can be a little bit confusing. Ubuntu releases or is released every year. In fact, there are two releases every year, six months apart. And you can always tell the year and month. We've just released today Ubuntu 23.04. The year 2023, the month is April 04. There will be another release uh, called 2310 in October. Hey, got that? Very good. Now, what does it mean? The April releases are considered more stable. Let's go with that. The October release is a pre-release for the one that's going to come out the following April. So it's only good for, it's actually good for about nine months before they kill support on it. So, all right, good to know information. And then one other piece of information. While today's release, 2304, is considered stable, it is not a long-term release. By the way, the code name for it, or the product name is Lunar Lobster. The current long-term release, LTS, uh, is 2204. It's called Jammy Jellyfish. And you can tell if it's going to be a long-term release. Very simply, it's in an even year and it's the April release. So the current long-term release, which I think is slated, I didn't look this up and get the hard numbers on it, uh, typically seven years, maybe nine years, something like that. The next one then won't happen until 2404. So a good way to track one of the top two Linux distros. I haven't played with 2210 and certainly not yet 20. 304. I tend not to play with those uh, unstable betas, basically, but uh, I'd certainly read up and what follow up and listen and learn on the forums. But give me a, a stable release that's long term support and I'm good to go. Uh, I just wanted to mention something about an upcoming topic. It's real quick and simple, but I have seen this question asked in so many of the, the shows and AMAs that I'm involved with, and we always discuss the answer verbally. Uh, I'm going to do in the next couple of weeks a show uh, how to verify a download. Has it been messed with? Uh, and that can be everything from a, a simple little text file all the way up to a full-blown ISO uh, and more bigger. Of course, the answer to that is, is hash. I want to show you how to use the hashes and actually check them out. Also, I want to talk about VirtualBox today and tell you a little bit about something. VirtualBox... 0.0 release 7.0 came out early this year we're not even in 7.1 yet um it is a dramatic it has dramatic improvements over the 6.x series today there was an update in the next last couple of days anyways it's virtualbox 7.0.8 uh where they have drastically improved support for the most current Linux kernel, 6.3. So if you're on the bleeding edge of playing with distros and you want to put them in VirtualBox, currently today's release or this week's release is a winner for you. They have also improved their support for Red Hat flavored distros for kernels. So Red Hat itself and Alma Linux and Rocky Linux and Fedora, uh, all of those are, are have reached, have achieved better support in the current version of, excuse me, VirtualBox. I was doing show prep in the last two days. I'm doing show prep all week long, but uh, on the 17th, I found an article posted by a gent called How to Install Microsoft Office on Linux. Now we use uh, Microsoft 365 right now uh, and it is one of the reasons that I haven't fully 100% converted to uh, my Linux machine as my daily driver because I can't run Microsoft 365 or Office 365, whatever the current title is right now. I think it's Microsoft M365. 
Um, but it would be a really good start if I could at least run most of the apps. And we're going to do uh, Teams today on Linux. So with those things running independently, uh, it's got some power. It's got some capability. So I will be exploring that uh, this week and this weekend. And if it's good and it's cool and it's valuable, we'll do a show on it. So very excited about that. Proton. Not Proton Mail, but Proton. Uh, Proton is like Steam. It's a, uh, a gaming shell. And it is a gaming shell for the, uh, not the Switch. Is it for Switch? No, it's for the Dream Stream thing, whatever it's called. Uh, and it also works on Linux. Well, they released a new version of Proton, uh, Proton 8.0 today. Today, April 18th. No, I guess two days ago. This is the 20th. April 18th it came out. Uh, think of it as a kind of like wine for games when you run on Linux. So it's not an emulator. It's a compatibility shell or shim, uh, something like that. Uh, makes it possible to run games that were designed only to run on Windows on your Linux system. But it's not a virtual machine. It's not a container. Uh, it's something more akin to Wine, which stands for Wine is not an emulator, so it's not an emulator. Uh, and I'm very excited about it because lots of new, there's lots of, of new support for Windows games that are very popular. And so we got a, a big list. I didn't copy the list, but uh, Proton 8. And the last bit of news since we have to do AI every week or CGPT every week, I, I read a really fascinating article this week uh, by title, Deep Fake Detection Badly Lagging. And the problem is, deep fake detection is under constant development. In fact, every year there is, for lack of a better term, a competition. Uh, it's more of an evaluation and an expo and... Uh, it's a challenge. How's that? That's presented uh, a bunch of deep fakes. Uh, right now, it's images. That's all there is. Uh, is offered up to teams and individuals and whatever to say, try your deep fake detection software on here and identify which is a deep fake and which isn't. It's real simple, straightforward. Uh, the winner of last year's, we just got the results of there, uh, got it right 78% of the time. AI has advanced so rapidly now that they say they couldn't get near that. They are working like mad to, to improve and stay up to date and whatever, but deepfake technology is advancing faster than the development of detection tools. That's a philosophical discussion that we should have for two hours in a forum where we could talk. Uh, so I'm just throwing this out to kind of tickle and tease you. Uh, who was that winner last year? The uh, the evaluation was done by Stanford, their Artificial Intelligence Index. And uh, the school, the, the team that won with their 78% was Deakin University's School of Information Technology at Soida Melbourne. Reading my notes, skipping stum... I don't want to do that. General observation. Let's go back and check and see who's checked in and do that. Then we'll do observations and then we'll get on to projects. <laughs> it's nice to be thought about. I think about you all the time. From the minute I wake up, you know, I get a new chair, which is needs new adjustments. There we go. Ah, okay. Now I'm at max height and you can see my... Newly acquired shirt. <laughs> it's a new chair. I'm not happy with it for, for random reasons. Sometimes in hours, sometimes in days, it <laughs> drops four inches. <laughs> All right. I already went past that here. So what exactly are you implying? Young lady? <laughs> Good to see everybody again. Been studying hardcore, enjoying time in the sea. And okay. 
I'd forgotten that you were in the CNL course. That's wonderful. Man, I'm so I'm hearing so many good stories come out of that. Uh, and here I'm gonna I'm gonna lift up the company's skirt for a second here. I uh, was watching Reddit the other day. Uh, a user posts, "Hey, I just finished a boot camp. Uh, I got my Sec Plus, and I did uh, a, 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 some kind of security oriented." boot camp and I'm very dissatisfied. I don't have a job. They promised me uh, good jobs with good pay and I got nothing. And my heart stopped and oh my gosh, is this? Uh, so I sent a message to the higher ups and the higher ups talked amongst the higher ups and they reached out to this person. <sighs> Wasn't our course. <laughs> we deliver on our promise. I'm not, I'm not doing company stuff here. Just telling you uh, an experience that happened in my work environment that Twerk us. Dave, your ears are probably ringing today. Also, Scott, I was talking about you all day to a co-worker. Well, bring your co-worker here and he can talk to Scott and I'll be great. I'm in luck. That was the only NSYNC song I've heard of. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, man, no control. Scott, did you actually know that song or did you look it up? I would have looked it up. I don't know any NSYNC songs unless I hear them. Supported about eight months, I heard. What am I missing there? Hmm. Okay. I'm not finding the reference to that. I'm sorry. You got Ubuntu LTS on an old Win 10 laptop, but I'm really just liking Mint. I, it's interesting. And Mint, if I'm right, Mint uses uh, the Mate desktop interface. Is that, is that right? I'm looking for a place to put this. I've got stuff over here that I'm going to show you today. And I don't want the condensation to get on it. So, soak my desk. See if I care. Coworker was talking about how jacked up our ticketing system is. And I mentioned the person who designed it must not have heard of peanut butter and jelly. Scott, if you weren't famous for that before you got involved with the people that we know here, you are now. O365 had a lot of issues today. It was today might be due to that. Okay. I was... <laughs> the victim of a very nice dentist. He, it was not uncomfortable, uh, but it's... It, it wasn't painful. How's that? But, you know, anytime they're committing atrocities upon your teeth. And then afterward, I pay the bill. And I was like, wait a minute. How much of this is insurance paying? Uh, about 1%. And so I came back to the house. Uh, and I'm, I'm a little loopy, which is a really bad time to do anything. And I start ranting at the, the company HR people and benefits people and uh, then at the dentist and then at the insurance company. Uh, I lost it on all three accounts and I'm, I'm blaming the loopiness on it, but bleh. I get the admin messages for M365 for one of my employers. Okay. Catherine, you're in a CNL cohort right now. I'd love to know your experience. Yeah, absolutely. That's something that we haven't done. We haven't brought anybody in on Mike's AMAs. Uh, to talk about the experience while it's happening. We've always kind of dug into people afterward. Um, Catherine, send me an email. Um, I can't do company stuff on here, so you're going to send it to me personally, but I can funnel it into my professional world after that. DRush TX. Uh, no, what? Send it, to the, uh, send it to this one here. What is it? It's DRush TX. Dave's email. Dave's email. It's also in the description uh, of the show, but send it to drush tx at adromeda.com. And if you're interested in talking with Mike uh, about your experiences there thus far, <clears throat> all right, it's in the chat feed. Jason was the dude of the movie you saw last night. So last night was date night. We've been trying date night all week long, and something always happened in the evening that uh, impacted us. So last night was, let's just go. 
And so I, I picked a, a really romantic movie, right? You're going to take the, 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 your partner out for a romantic date night. It's going to be a, a, a lovely dinner and then a, a nice romantic movie and then come back home and maybe a little wine and who knows where it leads, right? So uh, time was short. We had to, to manage things quickly. So we had a pair of hot dogs before we went to see John Wick Chapter 4. Is that a date night? She likes John Wick. I like John Wick. I am definitely going to have to come up with a better date night in the next week or two. <laughs> as much fun as it was. Okay, only in week two. So far, so good. Instructors are knowledgeable and patient. And I will give updated reviews periodically. Very good. Oh, yeah. Didn't I mention that? Yeah, we've got... <laughs> it's a dot .com to boot. And that was one of the reasons we had to pick Andromeda. Andromeda was out and... A bunch of other twists on Andromeda were gone, but I managed to get that one. It is a romantic movie about love and hate. And that's actually true. All right, back to Canotes. Uh, where are we at on time here? 26, perfect. <laughs> wow, I caught it. Okay, so uh, done with that. Oral surgery was fun. I got to tell you, the, the end of Dante... Uh, is he fits okay uh, if he and scott and i and mike and tulliwit and some of you other hilarious people were all in a group he would so fit in that group he's he's a wide crack wisecracker he's smart he's subtle he's knowledgeable he's all over the place uh if i weren't having junk stuffed in my mouth. I'd have coughed up the money just to shoot the breeze with him for a couple hours and, and have some fun. We did that uh, in the pre-op stuff and whatever. Just a fun and funny guy. He's the type who says, uh, you know how the, the, the doctor always tell you that you're going to feel a little pinch here? Yeah. Uh, you're not going to. It's going to feel like a massive wasp sting. That's my kind of doc. <laughs> and I'm catching up on Picard even though we watched John Wick last night we got we caught the matinee 5 o'clock so we got home got in time for uh, another Picard we've gone through 5 of the 9 that are out so far so by weekend we'll be all caught up on Picard yes definitely nerd dentist haven't figured out his I, uh, if you remember my uh my stock uniform shirt for Halloween. It's basically a big black and white skull. You know, in fact, I usually hang it on the wall behind us. Uh, just a, a big skull, teeth full. I, I, I didn't have a shirt w with blood spatter on it. If I had something like uh, something from a, a Jason movie or from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I would have worn that. But instead, I thought, well, you know what? It's got all these skeletal teeth. I'm going to wear that. He'll appreciate the humor. And he didn't because the the lovely people who got me prepped before then started out with two bibs and I was all covered up and he couldn't appreciate it. And he got all done. He says, okay, well, shake hands, get out of here. I said, you're not leaving until I whoosh, flashed in my shirt. <laughs> that he appreciated. Or he thinks I'm an idiot and just laughed and said, get him out of here. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. Oh. Yeah, the... the I haven't heard any reviews. Is that is anybody liking it? Anybody seen it? <laughs> no, I was the only meds at the time were whatever Novocaine or whatever the current uh, Novocaine type product is. So, and I'm such a dental phobe. We had that nice long conversation. Do you want to be sedated? And I said yes. I want to be sedated. You better figure that one out, Tullowit. I want to be sedated. Uh, and I said, you know what? I'm I'm a man in my 50s. I should be able to. So I did it. Yes, it was a <laughs> purposely a flashful thing. All right. Well, I know it wasn't very interactive, but there's things to do. And, and I got some things that I must share with you. Uh, so last week, let's start projects. Three. Two, one. All right, let's get started on projects for today. Last week, 
I had two projects in mind, and we did one because it ran long. And so I never got to the other one. The other one is very quick. So I'm going to do that other project today, installing and configuring Microsoft Teams on an Ubuntu box. And this would work on most other distros right out of the bat. And uh, we'll do that real quickly. I'll take about 10 minutes on that. Uh, I don't have to do all the background. I covered that last week about some of the differences between snaps and apt and flat packs and things like that. Uh, so we're just going to bypass all that stuff. And then I want to get into a, another project that's technical and isn't Linuxy. I, I find myself being dragged into the Linux world and dragging you along with me. I love it and I, I love it too much. So we got to slide back and, and do some other techie stuff. So to begin with, as you know, I have been moving over time to Linux as a daily driver. It's been over a year now, or pretty darn close to a year. Uh, started slowly, I'm picking up the pace, I'm adding more and more features and functions to it. I would have done this show on my Linux box, but I'm waiting on a piece of equipment that uh, I ordered 12 days ago, and I checked the status a day or two ago and said, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, oh, sorry, we've been really busy, there were so many orders, we didn't get the years, we'll get it out today, and I did see shipping uh, notifications yesterday, so... Need more cameras. <laughs> there are some Windows programs that are just simply... Un I did all this nonsense. No, I did all that stuff. Never mind. No, I'm right. I'm right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I was listening to Outcast today. <laughs> so there are some Windows programs that are simply unhappy, aren't going to happen. Uh, and so... I have to maintain two different boxes right now. My slowly converting Linux daily driver and my ever faithful Windows machine. And so there we go. So when I discovered that Teams was available to run on Ubuntu and other Linux boxes, I am pretty excited because that's a big piece of what I do every day. Uh, I have Teams meetings after Teams meetings after Teams meetings and uh, the calendars on there and uh, all of our intra office chat functions are on there. Uh, there used to be an apt package to install that on Linux machines and it went away. And lots of people have experimented with lots of different attempts to use that old teams and, and make it work. It didn't work very well. And as time goes by, it wasn't getting updated for the new features. Well, there is a gent out there who has taken on the project all himself. He maintains, uh, I don't know what he does, if he decompiles and recompiles teams and gets new features on it or whatever, but he maintains a snap package for it. So instead of sudo apt install, it's sudo snap install. And snap packages are a little different than, here goes my chair, are a little different than apt package because they run with all of their dependencies, All they're all together and they run in a sandbox environment. When you install them, they come in together as a big pile of files. And when you uninstall them, they go away. Is there a downside to that? Yeah, you may duplicate support files. There may be a, a support file, a, a library file, some dependency that comes with this that's already in your system and you could have theoretically taken advantage of it. And so we're chewing up more space. We may be chewing up more CPU time because we may be running multiple instances of it. Nonetheless, that is a direction that Ubuntu has gone to. They've created the Snap system. Uh, it's called, uh, <laughs> not Snaptastic. Anyways, the Snap Store. Uh, and they developed it kind of for their own proprietary purposes uh, pre-2016. Then in 2016, they made it open source and available for anybody to run it. And so there are lots of distros that can load and run snap packages and the snap installer. And so when I heard this, you could run teams on here. I am, I stopped what I was doing, whatever project I was in the middle of and said, no, no, that's something that I really, 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 really want. Snapchat. Not really. <laughs> And uh, I, I went to test it out. I didn't read anything on how to install it or what. It, I said, I'm, let's just try this and see what happens. 
And if it screws up, then I'll go actually read and, and learn what needs to be done. So let me fire up a, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's, let's VNC into the Ubuntu machine. We did that last week. MSTSC, remote desktop connection. <clears throat> Look at that. It remembered where I was last time. Yeah, okay, we got a connection. New Rush TX. And I opened up a file here earlier today with La Password. There's La Password. And I even tested it. Yes, connect, show me, do your thing, configure remote session, wonderful. Now let's get you to see it with me. That's TSC, control home, and there we go. And we don't need to see Borderlands right now. So hinky shrinky dink. I'm gonna do control alt T and bring up the terminal. This is already installed, but it doesn't hurt if I try and install over it. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna check it out. Does it exist? We'll use the command snap. You can do snap search or snap find, and then a word that you would find in the package name or in the package, uh, in the description. So let's try teams, because there's probably a lot of team stuff out there. And we got a lot of stuff on there. And if I remember correctly, and I think I do, it turns up as the very first hit here, teams-4-linux. Since we use the snap, that means it's in the snap store. So we have to use snap to install it. And here's the maintainer of this, Ismail, Ismael Martinez. Uh, I haven't spoken with him. Uh, I did want to mention one other thing in here. When you're in Snap, I just want to talk a little bit about this. Uh, okay, you can see over here next to some of these. I mentioned this last week, but now I get a chance to show you. There's a green check mark, and a green check mark means you are a verified developer. They stopped verifying developers in 18. You, if you call them up right now and say, hey, I'm a big time developer, I'm IBM, and we're not a verified developer. I'm sorry, we're not doing it anymore. <laughs> so poor Ismael is not a verified developer. And I suppose in theory, that means you should be nervous. Uh, but it, you know they, they do check things out before they put them in the Snap Store. So all right, we've identified the name of the package. So to install it, it's just sudo snap install and then the name of the package teams for linux and give it my password and tell me that i can pr prove that i'm allowed to do this my password is password 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 okay and it's already installed but what would happen if you did this the first time uh, it installs in less than a minute and it's all done then what you does see i've got it running over here uh, but in order to launch it, you would go down to this guy. I'm not doing full screen, so i got to do a little sliding up and down here. Type in Teams. And you can see the little red dot here means it's already running. There'd be no red dot. And you click it, and it comes up. Now, what we want to do here is get out of that and change screens for a second. So the first time you launch it, I showed you this picture last week. <clears throat> By the way, this is the new Lunar Lobster desktop instead of the jammy jellyfish that you see in the background. So the first time you launch it, it's gonna come up with this white box that says, give me an account name and give me a password to log in. And when I ran that the first time, uh, my heart was pounding. Is this going to connect with my corporate company account? Uh, sure enough does, wonderful stuff, and there you go. So now that it's up and running, let's go back to here. And we've just, Typed in Teams and launched it. We can do that. It's already running. There we go. 
and you saw this message from last week. I didn't I haven't used Teams on this machine this week, uh, but in here, all you got to do is whatever configuration and settings makes you happy. So you go into your settings. I set dark theme, uh, manage your accounts, manage your your privacy, and you can see I've I've left this thing running since I've installed it a couple of weeks ago. It's running absolutely fine. If I do close it out altogether. It remembers my login name and my password and comes back. Now, I don't know how long that lasts. Microsoft Teams, great way to go, great tool. I, in our company, we have gone through a lot of different intra-office communication products. Uh, and, you know, you get used to them. Some you kind of like, some you... I, I can't give Teams a 10, but I give it a solid 8 to 8.5. So she's a pretty cool. All right, that's all I want to do on that. Real simple. Open up your command line. Check and make sure that it's in your Snap Store. So again, if you're running a, distri a different distro, Patricia, Grace, do that. Uh, you'll have to install Snap. Sudo install Snap. Sudo apt install Snap. You've got to get the Snap installer installed. And then you can snap find teams and then when you're ready to install it sudo snap install teams dash four dash linux and the world's a happy place all right let me close this we don't need him no more go back to webcam <clears throat> and that's project one and we're in good shape on time. I'm check messages real quick here. Yes, the Ramones. I want to be sedated. <laughs> I've heard that a lot lately. <laughs> then the doctor probably said bye bye bye. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> you gotta lose. You want to kick them blues? No again, sweet uh. Yeah, we used to sing that at Rock and Roll High School. Uh, that's weird, not moderating and typing this stuff in. Just verbalizing it. New argument and Linuxy stuff here. I knew you were in that. Is this real life? Stop it. I thought Teams was only for Windows. It is. As far as Microsoft is concerned, that's absolutely true. However, as you can see, installs and runs just great on there. Techromancer. Oh, goodness, you guys. Pun city here. How long are we going to do this? I use Ubuntu as well, but my goal is to move further from Microsoft, not closer. Um, I am dying to talk to you about that. I don't have time on the show today. Next time, we're both on Discordia. Uh, I, I would like to understand that statement. I don't see, I don't understand what is it that makes you say Ubuntu is closer to Microsoft. <laughs> I'm getting company emails or, or company messages on Teams right now. <laughs> Nobody works this late except me. All right. Well, let's get on to the other project then. This is just fun. It's all it's almost done on cam almost done on camera. You get out of here. I don't need you. <clears throat> So project number two. I'm looking for the right thing to reach here. Okay, that's a good one. We live in a world where we, and have for many, many years, have used a, a variety of devices that need an external power supply. They're not battery powered. And those external powers might come from a, a wall plug-in straight to 120 volt input or 220 or 240 where uh, if you're in that part of the world uh, we certainly have a lot of devices that function with USB power connectors but there's a bazillion gazillion quadrillion devices out there that use uh, these little wall warts and dedicated power supplies with a DC barrel jack or barrel connector on them and they come in 
more sizes than you can shake a stick at. Let me try that. I never tried this. I'm gonna, I've got some of these out of order. I was trying to order them up and uh, got to go back. So here's a, a batch of them with all kinds of different sizes. And we have to care about two things here. The OD or outside diameter and the ID or the inside diameter. And why it matters is because of the way these things are constructed. If we look here at this one, here is the receptacle, the receiver. And what you're looking at here is a spring humped piece of steel. So when you press this barrel into there, it will make a good solid contact with that springy steel and it will kind of press it down. And then you can see the tip of a pin that goes into the hole here. Let's go back a bit. So here's some more receptacles. There's four different receptacles and there's another plug. Got plugs and receptacles. They can either be called, both of them can be called jacks. If you take a look at this, this is uh, a pin that is designed to be multi-size. You can see this little slot they put in here. So if you put in a, a connector that's small, a plug that's small, it can squeeze that down a little bit. But you've got to kind of do some, do your research and make sure that it does what we need to do. Now, my point of all this stuff is there's all kinds of different sizes and size matters. The thicker the middle pin, the more power, the more current that it can handle. And while there's all kinds of outside diameters for many, many devices, uh, here's one. Can I pull that out of there? Yeah. Have I got it locked in? I don't think it's locked in. Okay. So here's one. Uh, this guy doesn't draw a lot of power, and there's a little uh, power jack in here that you can barely see. But because it doesn't draw a lot of power, it's very thin. Don't need that big guy. But if you're going to run your, uh, I don't know, your, your desktop switch or your desktop router, your modem, your external, uh, oh, your external anything housing with a, uh, an optical disc in it or a hard drive or things like that. If it's not using a USB power connector, it's probably going to use one of these wall wart and barrel connectors. The outside diameter of tons and tons and tons of devices is 5.5 millimeters. And the two most common pins in the receptacle are either 2.1 millimeters or 2.5 millimeters. And it's kind of hard to tell in this image, doing the best I can here, but if you look, it's just bad photography, but this one is definitely smaller than this one. And so if I get a plug that's two and a half millimeters wide, there's a plug, and I try to plug it into a receptacle that's got a 2.1 millimeter pin, it's not gonna make connection. It's gonna get centered in here very lovely and that pin is going to just float in the middle of the hole of the connector. Likewise, if I get a plug that's got a 2.1 millimeter hole in it, it's not gonna fit over this 2.5 millimeter pin. So sometimes you just gotta know what you're working with. So I don't know what this is. I tested it today, with, uh, but I've got two ways to figure it out. One, uh, you get to know the five and a half millimeters. There's nothing close to it. So that's something you can eyeball, but you could get measuring tools for that. But if you had measuring tools, we wouldn't need to do the rest of, the rest of this. My problem is I don't know what size this hole is. And if, I put, if this is a two and a half millimeter and I put it on a two and a half millimeter pin, it's going to work. If I put it over a 2.1 millimeter pin, I'm not gonna know that it doesn't fit 
because the circum the circumferential connector around it holds it so steady again the pin is centered in there it's not going to touch the sides so it's not going to make connection and i can't tell so i got to find out is this a 2.5 millimeter hole or is this a 2.1 millimeter hole and how can i find that out if i have no tools the answer is go to a restaurant or go to your kitchen I did both. I went and bought a box of toothpicks so I would have some in my kitchen. And I went to a restaurant and snagged a couple of toothpicks. Let me see what I want. I want one of these ones. Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> Just to make sure they were the same size. Standard restaurant and household toothpicks are almost exactly 2.1 millimeters. Now here's an interesting situation. Uh, this. I got a toothpick here and I've got one that is of unknown size, a barrel jack. And I go to push it in and I can't tell because sometimes the guts inside this thing are so shallow that you can't get this pushed in all the way. So this is something that I learned Myself, this didn't come from any reading. Nobody pointed this out. I discovered that if you want to do this, use something sharp and cut your toothpick in half. And we're going to work with the non-pointed end. And so I'm going to pop this guy in here. I don't know if this is a 2.1 or 2.5, so I'll put it in. And it goes all the way in. And look at this. That just spins around like a toilet bowl brush. So that tells me I got a 2.5 or 2.1 millimeter pin here. And because it just swims in there, this is a 2.5 millimeter hole. This one should fit absolutely snug. Now I'll try the, the sharp end on this one. I know you can't tell it's sharp, but there it goes. So here's the sharp end going in. I can't tell. So again, I'll use the blunt end, the cutoff end. It's like threading a needle. Oh, man. It's beautifully snug. If I turn it upside down, it's not coming out. I didn't have to force it in. What happens if I turn that other one upside down while I've got the pin in it, while the toothpick is in it? Okay, ready? Pops right out. So how to measure hole diameter on a, a DC barrel jack without tools. The answer is a toothpick, 0. 0.0002 cents of expense. I know I've wasted all that wood. Don't worry, I'll use it in the fireplace this year. It won't be a waste. That's all. Simple, fun technology, easy for everyone. And uh, give it a try. You've got a couple of these lying around. If you don't have toothpicks lying around, because we're not supposed to use toothpicks anymore, fine. Just pick one up at the next restaurant you go to and bring it home. And give this a, a test. It's a ton of fun. All right. So projects, what did we do today? We installed Teams on Ubuntu. It was easy to do because Ubuntu comes natively with the Snap installer, the Snap environment. If you want to do it on another the distro, piece of cake. You just have to install the Snap installer. And that's available in all the apt repositories. So sudo apt install Snap. Now you can sudo snap install Teams for Linux. And then once you've got it installed, you run it, you configure it, and it works like a dream. Cannot wait to get the Microsoft Office going on there too. It's, it's enough to make my conversion so close to 100% and complete. I haven't, I have an earwig song. It started about two hours before the show. Um, I, I wouldn't sing it out loud, but it's just, it will not leave my head, so I will stick it in your head. Uh, I write sins, not tragedies. Dig out your panic at the disco, because it is just pounding through my head. All right, let's see who turned up, and then we'll do... Uh, I timely shut down today. We got through all the project. I'm so pleased. Buzz, buzz, grind, grind. <laughs> We did that, we did that, did that. I did all this 
off the cuff because if I did it off my notes we'd still be talking <laughs> I keep having this note in in all of my things I was gonna do show number three I had a particular topic in mind for it and I don't know what we're on now seven or eight something like that uh, and I keep pushing it back and I'm probably never gonna do it but it's always on my notes for next week's show we're gonna do that show that I was planning on doing five weeks ago all right that's everything as far as content for the show goes I said, we've got some really good stuff going up we'll take a look at uh, the last of the the questions comments and participants vamp for about four minutes and then close this puppy down on time you can't do that I've always run like a minute and a half over this is gonna be a great day I was about 30 seconds late to start but I'm gonna end almost on the second and we'll see how she all goes <laughs> All right, you guys are just beyond hilarious. I love I love you guys. You're wonderful. Tell the way, project number two nearly as good as love potion number nine. You know what I watched? I don't know. Was it Sunday night, Monday night, something like that? Uh, Plan nine from outer space. And as I recall, it was Sunday. And you know, there are just for me old B horror movies. I'll watch that before I watch almost anything. Possible exception, Galaxy Quest. Love Galaxy Quest. Make sure you pick the right one, even if it seems to fit. Right. You cooked an external hard drive a few weeks ago. Always read the power ratings. Oh, yeah, so that was something I didn't talk about. Uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. So, yeah, pin size isn't the only thing that matters. There are two other things that matter, voltage and current. And I guess I got a second to finish that out. Voltage, you can't mess with. You get plus or minus at most, in most systems, 5%. Under voltage by more than 5% from the, the spec, uh, and it's not going to run. Over voltage from the max spec, uh, and you're probably going to damage it. And we're talking literally a half a percent differential. Current always comes up as a, a long topic. I would love to do a long one on it, and I will. But for now, this is a reservoir of current. I'm reading the label on here and it says 10 amps. Okay, that means it has the capability, the capacity of delivering 10 amps if needed. It doesn't push amps. So if I get a device, let's say this is five volts and 10 amps, and I got a device over here that needs five volts and one amp, it's completely safe. This thing says I can give you 10 amps if you want, and the device I'm plugging into says, that's cool, I just need one. Okay, so be it. So I'm, I'm right on for the five volts and good to go. I can plug it into a device that needs two amps or three amps or five amps or seven amps or 10 amps. Now what happens for with a device that needs 11 or 12 or 15 amps? This thing says, I just don't have the capacity. I can't deliver the current that it needs and the device won't work. You won't hurt it. If you give it too little current, it just won't function, but you won't damage it. Okay, with me? All right, we do a whole electric class one day. That'd be kind of fun. Not a class, a presentation. All right, we've got a little over a minute here. Let's check the last of the questions and wind her down. Optical disc, what's that? <laughs> Scott, I got things to talk to you about uh, writing here. Not for me, but some things that have come up. Not at work either. It's just things that I've run into lately in other worlds. Uh, the little thing the eye doctor puts into the frames. Thank you. <laughs> Me too. Um, this is optical disc well technology of our forefathers is on its way to describe is one way to describe it. Yeah, I'll go with that. Compact discs are for kid sized glasses. Stop it. Uh, I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> I just super scrolled. I am gonna run long because I'm gonna read everything here. Munchies. Cool thing to know. Yep, I think so too. Thanks, Scott and Tullowit. Patricia, thank you, MacGyver. <laughs> I hope you hate the new MacGyver as much as I do. <clears throat> Maybe it's just because I'm old and I'm used to 80s hair. Siegfried, good evening, my friend. Nice to see you, amigo. Siegfried, the founder of the formerly unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. He's handed over the reins uh, to uh, Total Seminars and it has become the official Total Seminars Discord channel, and we're going to talk about that on Monday on Mike's show. Uh, Tuesday, 
we start something new and amazing on that channel. Uh, no secret, uh, we're going to start classes on there. We're going to do uh, a Core 1 class this Tuesday and a Core 2 next Tuesday and a Net Plus the following Tuesday and a Sec Plus the following Tuesday. Half hour cram sessions followed by half hour Q&As and then we're going to recycle and just do that every month. I'm going to do the Core 1, Steve Nicholson's the Core 2, uh, Mike Myers, Net Plus, Andrew Hutz, Sec Plus. So you don't get to see anybody's face too much and get bored with it all. I got loads of toothpicks, bought a box in the 90s. We bought a box of frill picks for our wedding. We, we self-catered 35 plus years ago. We still have most of them. <laughs> I use them for uh, in the shop all the time for smearing uh, epoxy. How's that? I have many adapters and this will help. Good. Yeah, it's great having Scott here. Thank you, man. Old movies are better than new movies. Sometimes. I need more power. Electric presentation would be awesome. We should do, we'll, I'll do that. I'll put that in the notes tonight. We will do uh, an electricity thing. I, there's so many bad presenters out there and, and wrong, but they get the right idea. Uh, I'm going to be there on Monday, 100%. Cool, this will be on Tuesday. Uh, but AMA, 2 o'clock local time. Mike's AMA will be there. Uh, Mike is doing on his Monday show, Routing Tables, this Monday. Catherine Morgan, what time for the class session? 7 p.m., same as this show. 7 p.m. Central. Uh, they'll be recorded. Frill picks, great way to use with straws for a blowgun war. Well, if I couldn't count on somebody for that statement, uh, other than one person in the whole planet, it would be Tullowit. Oops, that, that, that one. Let's go to this one. All right, well, let's wind this up. Guys, hope you have had half as much fun as I have. I love this stuff. I wish you all a great rest of the week and a good upcoming weekend. Take care of each other. Take serious steps to stay healthy. And, of course, if it's at all possible, call or visit your parents. And never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resource we have are you and I. So with that, good night. I'll see you on Adromeda next Thursday and on the Monday AMA and soon on the Discords. And until then, I am out of here. Later, guys.